Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Sidinger, Merry Christmas, and I felt it was about time you got to know me a bit better. So one of the first things you should know about me is that I have been playing games almost my entire life. I always loved the atmosphere, the gameplay, and being an antisocial club purely because you have new games that need to be playing at Christmas. That's right, I would sit in my room just playing games without a care in the world. So I felt what better way to introduce myself to you and to reflect on my past 19 years of being alive than by sharing my top 25 games of all time. Disclaimer, this is my list, I may ruin for games, for, may ruin plots, sorry, for games you have yet to play or watch as the case may be, and some of the games aren't exactly popular. But hey, I like them and I'll give my reason when I get to each one. Finally, at times I knew the placement of the game, but couldn't decide between the original and its sequel. So I put both of them at the same spot because I couldn't, think, I couldn't decide between the two. So let's get this countdown off right. Let's start it off with a bang and commence the countdown. Like a sir. Yeah, that's right. I have to do actually have a top hat if you didn't already know. And, uh,. I do just want to say I don't know I don't know how good the audio is going to be on this because I I can't hear it. Carry on. This is a bit of an obscure one. Castle Story, a fairly new concept that was once described to me by a friend as RTS Minecraft is a game in which you build castles and get workers to perform certain tasks to build the design you create. This game captured my heart since I began playing, and although development is very slow, with infrequent updates, the game itself is brilliant for what it is. The main idea of the game was that it was a wave survival game in which you build a castle to defend your crystal. The crystal also doubles as a unit or bricktron spawner, allowing new workers or defence units to be created. There was also a sandbox mode, which I spent most of my time on, testing out potential new designs and playing around with a physics engine. Whilst it is very much up to your choice whether this concept interests you or not, it is on my list. It's number 25. I would recommend at least checking out this game to see if it's something that you would enjoy. Also, I have done a series of this game on my channel, and you can find it out by clicking here. Bastion is one of those indie games that a lot of people love. With its tight controls and plot driven completely by a narrator who you only ever see in the hub world, there are a lot of things to love about this game. I myself love it to the point where I have a bandana with its logo on it. Not that that's really relevant, but you know, oh well. The plot centers around you, the kid, quote unquote, wandering around the barren wasteland of the town you once called home, which was destroyed when the calamity. Throughout your adventures to different regions, you encounter two survivors, both of whom are Ura, as I call them. I, I don't know the exact pronunciation, that's just what I say. Another race who it turns out you were on bad terms with. What follows is some deserving revelations, and an ending which requires you to have a heart of stone to not be moved by. Throughout the narrative, things happen in Zulf and, and Ura you meet along the way. Betrays you after discovering the man you're, you started with. The, the man you start your... The man you're with started the calamity in order to wipe out the Ura. I will learn to speak one day. It will not be this day. After his people beat him unconscious believing he led, them, he led you to them, you have a choice. Do you leave the man who betrayed you and fight your way back to the sanctuary, or do you drop the weapon in order to show humanity and take yourself back with you? No matter what you do, this game is amazing and I would highly recommend it. I'm going to tell you a secret about me. I'm not a fan of RPGs. I know, I'm not, a lot of people are, I, I, I'm sorry. I understand the love for these games, but myself, I've never been able to fully grasp what was so amazing about them. That is, unless you count Dragon Age Origins. Yes, this game is the only RPG that I've ever played with and enjoyed the entire journey. I truly cared for everyone involved in the game, I built friendships with the people I knew and talked to them constantly. Why? for that sweet booty action. 
Nah, I'm joking. But seriously, I genuinely found every character brilliant, especially Shale, the sarcastic and somewhat camp stone golem. I loved Alistair like a brother and fell in love with Liliana. Everyone has great backstories that I love. Never have I ever been more engrossed in an RPG. The story? Well, to sum it up, there's these darkspawn things and they're baddies. But you're a grave warden, so you're a goodie. Kill them. What? what? Is the story more, far more complex? Okay, I guess it's confession time. I haven't, I haven't actually finished it. I spend so much time doing side quests for companions in an XP that I don't actually usually progress very much. But still, this game had an impact on me and is incredibly enjoyable. The main theme of this game alone should fill you with so much testosterone and you want to punch little baby man in his tiny freaking head. Number 22 is Team Fortress 2. Where do I begin? Hats. Of course hats. That's the only, that's the only joke. That, that, that's the only TF joke I know. Of course, of course, of course. Team Fortress 2 is a strangely amusing and ridiculously fun game designed for team play. However, you will not know what team play looks like if you play Team Fortress 2 because there's no such bloody thing unless you are a medic and you need to uber someone. Anyway, the story in its most basic form is there's a red team and a blue team hired by two brothers, one team for one brother. The brothers fought over everything and as a result hired mercenary teams to take the land from the other brother. Meanwhile, a woman known as the director and her assistant Miss Pauling are, both, are playing both sides against each other. I can't really explain anything more about this game besides the fact that it's brilliantly entertaining and most importantly, free. Play it, I highly recommend. This game was the game that I never described, no, never heard anyone describe to me, or even talk about, ever. Rayman M was the first competitive racing game I ever encountered. When I say competitive, of course, I mean screwing over your friends to win. It was also an arena battle game, just throwing that out there. But it was a fantastic game as it was a rid so ridiculously light-hearted yet fair. It wasn't like Mario Kart whereby, oh, you got this this random you, you got this random power up, that means that if you're in first, you're completely screwed. In this, you literally it, it was only you with something that could move the arena to screw over your friends. That was it. It's it was far more sophisticated in my opinion. And a lot more fair whilst also being ridiculously competitive. A fun little game I remember very fondly. It's also the game that introduced me to Rayman, one of my favourite franchises to this day. Now to tell you about a fun story to introduce you to the next game. At the age of 10, I was playing The Sims 2. Suddenly, I heard about this new game coming out. I saved up all my money to buy it, but it took two weeks. I eventually bought the game brand new off the shelf. Yes. That was when I first encountered hardware limitations. The game wouldn't run. I bought the less good DS version, but after growing a bit older with a superior computer in Steam, I finally bought it. The intergalactic space life simulation that was Spore. Now I know everyone makes fun of this game with constant penis monsters, but I took this game very seriously. The concept of bringing a species up from birth to run the galaxy was awe-inspiring. I still love it today. Even though I seemingly have no imagination when going creating creatures, the fact that the story itself is run by you and no one else, and the fact that at the centre of the galaxy is... Well, I won't spoil it for you. Play it for yourself and see, or check out my series on Spore here, where I reach the centre of the galaxy. Whatever. See if I care. Now for the first sports game on this list, however I don't actually know if there are any more sports games on this list, I'll let you know. SSX, I couldn't tell you really why I love this game. Was it the interesting but awesome tricks? Was it the music? Was it the combination and the idea of snowboarding down a snowy mountain at night while glowing in the dark? It's a combination of these things. 
I can't fully comprehend why I love this game, but I do. It's like eating, I guess. You enjoy it, and you keep going back every now and then for a bit more. Even if it's only, if it, even if it's only like 10 or 20 minutes. That was a very bad way of describing it, I understand, but I, I feel you get the idea. The story really isn't important, so I won't describe it, but the point is that this game was incredibly relaxing and almost therapeutic for me. I play this, and all my stress melts away. Do you get it? Because it was, it was on the snowy mountain, and the snowy mountains melt more. more. Now for a film game. What is going on with the with this list? What what is even happening? I don't understand. Well, we all had those weird games that for some reason we loved. For me, it's Ghostbusters for the original Sega Mega Drive. Or Genesis, whichever you want to call it. I can't quite explain my love for this one. It was one of the more interesting games I had on the system and I had never seen bosses that were so friggin' difficult my younger self would have thought them comparable to Dark Souls. Although obviously I've grown up and no longer believe this, please don't destroy me. Maybe it's the bosses or the stages, but I love it all the same. For some reason, the sound effects in particular make me so happy and not the soundtrack. I'm an incredibly weird hurt person, so hey, whatever. Here we go. I'm ready to go into the light because me saying this is going to result in my execution. But I really enjoyed. Christ. Resident Evil 5. Yeah, hear me out before you scream at me, please? Thank you. Right, so I am a dumb ass if you hadn't already noticed. And I had seen how good Resident Evil was for my PS1, as my mum used to play it all the time. When I was six. I great idea. Obviously, obviously, great idea. Actually, it's it's surprising it didn't scare me much, and and that instead ignited the fuse that eventually led to the explosion of love for zombies that I have to this day. Interesting fact, actually. I used to think I had the first Resident Evil on PS1 and thought it was an FPS. I only recently found out that was Resident Evil Survivor. Oops. Anyway, fast forward about eight years, and I finally had an Xbox 360, and bought Resi 5. I began playing it and fucking loved it. Even to the extent where I collected every BSAA emblem and gem, upgraded most of my arsenal to max and completed it multiple times and unlocked the unlimited RPG. I really love this game and to this day I still don't understand the flack it gets. In relation to the series it used to be, I understand some of you hate the direction it went but, this, uh, but as a game itself, it was great, in my eyes at least. Story wise... Basically, Albert Wesker wants to follow Charles Darwin with Survival of the Fist. I'd say that fits it. Great. Now for the FPS that I truly loved for various reasons. Halo 3. What was it that I loved about this game? Forge mode was great. I mean, obviously it was improved in reach, but at the same time, it was somewhat satisfying building your own sort of fortress to fight against other people who build their own fortress and then destroying it in front of their eyes. Um, I was an evil bastard, I'm sorry. It was the first chance I'd ever had to get a hold of the building blocks of a level. Multiplayer was incredibly fun as well, especially custom games on the old maps like Trash Compactor and Ghostbusters. But I loved the campaign equally as much, with its awesome levels and cooperative multiplayer. Truth be told, I don't really recall the story because I have not played it in a while as I just haven't had time, but I remember enjoying it so that's good I guess? But if you haven't played the Halo series at all, play them, they're awesome. Number 15 is really getting into the weird and wonderful. A game based around music, or should I say an artist? A savant pursuing perfection. Savant Ascent. Yes, it is in essence a mobile game on PC, but I don't care. This game is goddamn ridiculous. You are playing as Savant, a, jo a genreless music creator, or rather the character that represents him, Savant de Bergerac, and you shoot robots. 
That's all there is to it, but what follows is some blindingly incredible difficulty that is so much fun to go through. Sure, there's a bit of story about defeating a robot samurai in space while robot la robotic lasers firing for sharks attack you, but this game truly shines in its music and you have no idea how difficult I was to say as quickly as possible. And it's endless mode. Just flying up a, to a, a tower atop two elevators while shooting robots. Dear Christ, I love this. And it's only around two pounds, so I'd highly recommend buying it. Now for another game I didn't see a lot of enjoyment from. Wet. Wet is a game about the Matrix that has nothing to do with the Matrix. You spend 50% of your time jumping off of walls and enemies, slicing people to ribbons with your sword and shooting any hope of the, out of your eye sockets with dual revolvers. And the best part? Your playing is one of the most badass female protagonists ever, Ruby Malone. Another great thing about her? She wears clothes that make sense with what she does and is genuinely terrifying. Speaking of the great things, the game's soundtrack and levels are also brilliant, with some of my favourite missions being missions 2, 6 and 11. Some sections even have Ruby become pissed beyond comprehension because some arsehole got their blood in her eye, leading to one of the most badass filters I've ever seen that can only be compared to Mad World, the video game by the way, except switch the colours red and white around. I'm still waiting for white wet too, please, Bethesda. Please. Here is a strange one. This isn't specifically a game in itself, but it is a mini game within a game that became pretty much what half the audience even buys the full game for. I am of course talking about Call of Duty Zombies. Am I the only one who believes that Activision would be better off just making a game purely of COD Zombies? I can't tell you how much I love this mini game purely because everything was always tense and fun with your friends when, you, when your friends are all playing with you. The second one of you goes down. That's when your skills are really tested, because you won't have long to revive them and the zombies won't stop to let you, giving you a choice, revive your teammate and risk dying, or allow their progress to be reset back to the weakest weapon in the game. A lot of people will agree with me when I say this is the main selling point of Call of Duty now. It's the only reason I would buy it, however I prefer zombie games, which are, f which are more focused on zombies, but I'll get to that later. So let's talk about Rayman again. Rayman Revolution was an interesting case of better hardware means better game with where the original Rayman 2 was not as good as Rayman Revolution, which was in essence the same game with some changes, for starters there's an overworld, as well as purchasable upgrades. I love this game mainly due to the fact that it introduced me to something I had never seen in games with an older audience, which was the dark storyline, where rather than being Mario-esque with everything being cheerful with an overall bad guy. This game had none of that, and it, with uh, and not had you freeing various creatures and saving everyone from robotic slavers who are also pirates. Yes, there were cheery environments, but all of them had a feeling of darkness looming over your shoulder. Perhaps that's why I loved it so much as a kid, and now have a love for dark storylines. I don't know, I don't know, but I would highly recommend this to anyone wanting to experience the Rayman franchise. And now for the first game on this list that I have 100% completed. A game where I enjoyed one half more than the other, but it seems like, it seems that the part I liked, no one else liked. Sonic Generations was a fun and brilliant game. And I loved playing modern Sonic over classic, because there was more speed than I, there than I had ever witnessed to that day. In fact, at one point I was ranked within the top 1000 players to complete rooftop run, completing it in 2 minutes and 20 seconds. I don't care about the plot, I cared about going fast, which is probably why I preferred modern over classic. But what I really loved about this game was the fact that for some reason I couldn't stop playing it, even to the point where I collected all of the red star rings on every stage and got an S rank, and still often play it. I would recommend that if you ever wanted to get into Sonic, and not in that way you dirty bastards, you should pick up this game and decide which gameplay style you prefer.
And now for my favourite top-down shooter of all time. Hotline Miami is very much one of those games that I heard about frequently but never actually saw. Then one fateful day on Steam, I saw Hotline Miami on sale. I thought it looked fun and upon grasping the controls I was hooked. Seriously, I'm currently writing my own screenplay adapt adaptation of this game that I would love to get approved for an official movie. I'll try my best to explain the story. Russian Mafia kill them all. Of course it's more complex than that, but there is, that is the best way to explain the plot for this game. For both games, even. Yes. Both. I can't decide which game I like more. The first game has more one of the most badass main protagonists ever, and the second has a Pulp Fiction feeling around following seven... <sighs> Sorry, I've just ran upstairs. Now I'm following several people, as well as showing the story of Jacket outside the first game. It truly is brutal, bloody, fast-paced, frantic fun, and whether you buy that or first or second, I would highly recommend it. Oh, childhood TV shows. Time for Teletubbies, Tweenies, Bob the Builder. Wait, is that the sound of the, the, best, the best sport ever? The best show I watched as a child, and a show I cannot wait for it to be broadcast again. Speaking of Robot Wars, Robot Wars Arenas of Destruction was awesome. An incredibly buggy mess, but still awesome. I can, still, I can genuinely play it today and piss myself at how broken Pussycat is, and just generally have an awesome time. On a side note, the game on screen is actually Robot Wars Extreme, but they are similar enough. The fact that you have the ability to create your own robot and kick the arse of an incredibly unreliable Chaos 2 and the like made the fo made four year old me shit myself with happiness. To this day I would still like to enter Robot Wars as a competitor and I'm actually in the process of building a robot. Now for a game that was just downright stupid fun and brilliant. Rayman 3 was a very, very fun game. So fun I have three separate copies of it. One on PS2, a digital copy on my, P on my computer, and the HD version on my Xbox 360. The environments were so rich, the bosses fun and awesome to look at, and they did the impossible. They made an underwater boss fun. That takes skill. There were also a few vehicle segments that were all very fun. It was the board and not the car because fuck that noise. The snowboard race segment I would purposefully lose just to play over and over because it was so damn fun. God, I miss being young. Not that I'm exactly old right now, but you know, no job, simple homework and video gaming weekends. Rayman 3 stuck itself into my heart with just how seriously it didn't take itself. At the time, I had never encountered anything like else like it. Here's another one bizarre one that I couldn't decide which I enjoyed more, the original or the sequel. It also doesn't help the fact that not a lot of people like the not a pe not a lot of people like this game. And I will get lynched for saying it. But Sonic Riders and Sonic Riders Zero Gravity were amazing games in my opinion. They gave me something new from a racing game. Other than Rayman M, which was actual fair competition. Unlike Mario Kart and the like, Sonic Riders didn't have any power-ups to take down enemies, all it had was an attack that you had on you every time you boosted. And it wasn't like other racing games in the fact that AI were usually never too far behind you, and it took skill to maintain a lead in first place. Haha, <laughs> get it? Because it did in, in, in the first place. Because you, you were in first. Okay, I'll show myself up. Sonic Rider Zero Gravity was similar, except there was no boosting. Instead, you had a meteor that manipulated gravity, allowing you to make very sharp turns with more speed than if you had just turned normally. The introduction of gears also made the game more challenging, as everyone started with, in essence, the same board. You had to collect enough rings to actually gain the abilities your character usually had. My favourite character in Sonic Riders was Sonic, with the blue star, too. That's the only reason why Sonic was my favourite character. And it was Silver with the rail linker in Sonic and Zero Ravi. Probably the most recent addition to this list, but I must admit I love Payday too. I've always been a sucker for team-based games and the fact that you can do this whilst robbing banks was just a brilliant idea. 
pre-planning allowed you to give yourself an edge whilst you got to talk whilst you also got to talk it out with your team if you're going in loud or stealthy it also allowed your teammates to draw knobs on the fucking blueprints because they're all idiots with a huge array of weapons and characters including my bay jacket as well as distinct roles for every teammate team member you could strategize and plan before executing the perfect heist or you could attempt stealth and have your friend believe he's holding cards and then throw a grenade this has happened before Now for the newest game to be released on this list. A game which fills me with hope that one day I too can be a hero to somebody. After all, the world could always use more heroes. Overwatch, I'm, I'm sorry for this joke by the way. Overwatch came to me at, a per at the perfect time. I was literally crushed by a recent breakup but the fans I was dragged away from were happy to accept me back. If I bought Overwatch, it wasn't technically that kind of ultimatum like you can only have friends if you buy Overwatch. It wasn't like that, no don't worry. I bought it played it once and then two weeks later I wondered what happened. The sheer strategy and competitive competitiveness of this game allows uh, allows me to kind of come back to it time and time again. One day we shall arrive at Insomnia with a team. We will take the championship I swear. Oh and for those wondering I main McCree, Sombra, Lucio and Diva. Okay, so this may be mostly nostalgia speaking right now, but when I first got a PS2 and played a Sonic game for that platform, I was blown away by the speed, and as a result, I love Sonic Heroes. I feel I may have just upset a lot of fans, because there are no TV Sonic games on here. Oh dear. I understand a lot of people were giving up prematurely as it was just a bit too fast at times, but my 6 year old self grabbed these controls and understood them better than my 19 year old self has yet to, co yet to recreate. I love this game, the soundtrack as you can imagine was incredible too. While, you, while we're still talking about the controls, I must ask what, every, what the problem was. I personally grasp these controls very quickly and don't see why everyone complains as much as they do. I love the speed of Team Sonic, the edginess of Team Dark, I love the oh. Oh no. And I love the chaotic. There isn't much left to say, but I will say this. I found this game so difficult when I was younger, it took three months to get past Bingo Highway. That wasn't because of the controls, by the way. But now I don't have a problem with the mission. So there's, there's a fun fact. It also may piss off a lot of people to know I prefer modern Sonic despite his flaws. It was just more fun to me. Now for an obvious pick. A Smash Bros game. Smash 4 to be exact. Please don't cut an ID me Nintendo. Smash 4 was the first real Smash game I played and it became a regular thing that me and two friends would duke it out. Now obviously we all had our favourites. I myself loved Ike. He was a fast powerhouse of a character. F as I should call, as I shall call him. It stands for fucking arsehole. Loved DDD's D. And J loves Shulk's cheeky Menando. We played it for hours. And whilst I didn't always win all the matches, I got the moral victory through the most KOs because if you aren't getting the most KOs as Ike, you probably aren't playing that well. I love this game with a passion and whilst it has worn off a bit, I'm sure with another battle it would be sparked off again. You've seen me play it. You've heard me talk about it. My favourite multiplayer game of all time, Left 4 Dead 2. The only reason it isn't a tie between the first and second is the fact that the first campaigns are now on the second game and I love me some Left 4 Dead. I've sunk months into the Xbox 360 version before sinking about a week into the PC version. I could play this game endlessly. It's just a huge barrel of laughs from start to finish, especially on Expert where your skills are really tested. I, being the leader of the group with the most experience, tend to walk first in order to keep the infected off of us, and will hold them off to allow my team to escape. It's just fantastic in that sense, you actually have to take roles and hold out in safer areas against infected. It's just awesome, and don't worry, I have a countdown on my favourite campaigns ready, it just needs to be scripted, but what could be number one? We are number one. I'm sorry. I'm, that's gonna be a bit. That's just dated the video. It's a dated me now. I, I, I apologize. I'm so sorry. I didn't eat it. I'm sorry.
If you've been with my channel for a long amount of time, you'll have seen me play it. If you've been with my ch with me even longer, you'll have seen me play the first game in the franchise. That game is Oddworld Abe's Exodus. A game that has been with me for years. A game so beautiful in its time of release that it, this is in 1998 and it's gorgeous. I've completed this game a number of times, but for the first time, I 100%ed the game. And it was right here on this channel that I did so. The game is perfect. Just the right amount of dark tones, just the right amount of jokes, just the right difficulty of puzzles, and just the right amount of levels. This game had it all, and remains to this day as one of my favourite games ever made and favourite stories ever told. The menu music itself was beautiful enough to bring me to tears and relax me, and it was just so juxtaposed to the actual land in which Abe's Exodus is based. This game is perfect, and I have no other words that can accurately describe how this game makes me feel, and with that, I can't wait for Oddworld Soulstorm. Thank you for so much for watching. My name is Sir Dinger. Leave a like if you've enjoyed this, ep in this enjoyed this video. Subscribe to become a true sir and keep up to date with everything that I post. Good day, and I will see you next time. Merry Christmas. And a happy new year to you all.